Welcome to part two of the Introduction to Proofs video for sums and product notation. My name is Professor Michael Baluk. In the last video, we saw how to define sigma notation, and now we're going to see uh, some theorems related to sigma notation, and we'll move on to pi notation. So what happens when we're adding up one uh, n times? Well, the one here doesn't depend on the index, so this is 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 n times. What if we take the sum from i equals 1 to n of a constant times the term? Well, here you can factor the constant outside of the, outside of the sum. Here to see this, you should really write everything out um, explicitly, and you'll see why this is allowed. Then for the final one, how does sigma notation play with the sum of the terms? Well, the sigma will break up across the two. To see this, write out your favorite example, and you'll see that it works this way. Now finally, here's an exercise for you to see if you understand sigma notation. Show that if you go from i equals m to n of adding up one, this is n minus m. Now there are a lot of variables in this, but you should think of m as like 10 and n like 100. So what if you add up one going from 10 to 100? What should you get? Well, you should get n minus one. And this is how it would work in Python, but there's a slight indexing error. So this is incorrect. It's actually n minus m plus one. Or maybe I'm wrong, who knows? Check which of the two is correct. Now we move on to product notation. Again, let ai be a real number, so a1, a2, a3, etc., and let n be the stopping index. So the product notation uses a pi for p, sigma is an s for sum. So the product of these things is what you would expect. It's a1 times a2 times a3, and you keep going up until you get to n. So just like sigma notation, we have the end index, we have the start, we have the dummy variable, and we have the general term. This time, instead of taking a sum, we're taking a product. One good example of this is the sum from the sorry the product from i equals one to n of i. So this is one times two times three times four. You've seen this before. This is four factorial. Here's a brain melting set of uh, observations. So before we get to what are empty sums and empty products, I want you to write the for loop that produces products if you're comfortable with CS. Now, if we're going from an index that's lower than the upper one, sometimes we mean this to go backwards. But for this example, I really just mean, what if you're adding up nothing? So if you're adding up nothing, this should be zero. And what happens if you're taking the product of nothing? So you, you're not actually taking any indexes. Well, this should be one. And part of the way we can see this is by looking at the for loop that, that makes us sums and looking at the for loop that makes us products. When we wrote the for loop for sums, we, had, uh, we initialized sum to be zero, and then we added things on top of that. When you initialize the product, you initialize it to one and then multiply things onto that. So this is partly why zero factorial is equal to one and partly why x to the zero is equal to one. Which I think is a nice uh, observation. It sort of helps explain some stuff. Now let's go to the product theorems for product notation. So again, let c be a constant and let n be a natural number. What is this product? Well, it's the product of a bunch of ones 
it'll just be one. This one's more sophisticated. What happens if you take the product of C times a term, N times? Well, this time you can't just factor out the C because the constant is being multiplied N times. So you have to actually factor out C to the N many of them. And then finally, how does, pro how does product notation behave with products? It behaves how you think it should behave. It's the product of both of them. This is easy. All three of these are easy to see when you write out some examples. Here's your end boss for sum and product notation. If you can answer this question, then you understand uh, sum and product notation. All right, finally, let's take some time to reflect. How do you recognize the dummy variable, the starting index, the end index, and the terms you're adding? What are the similarities and differences between sum notation and product notation? How is sum notation like a for loop in programming? Thank you very much and have a great day.